Hey, it's Mr. Hayes. We're back formalizing sampling distribution of P hat. It's the first part of the second part of chapter seven, which is in unit five of AP stats. Um, anyway, so let's talk through. There's three points today. The first one is this. The mean and standard deviation of the distribution of P hat is just going to be, and this is the nice part, it does make our math, math a little bit easier. The mean is just going to be the same as what proportion of the population is. Okay, remember P hat is your sample, P is your population. We went through some of that on the first day of chapter seven. Uh, make sure you have that handy and on a post-it note. Um, the standard deviation, like we talked about at the end of the um, experience part, simplifies out to be the square root of P times one minus P all over N. Um, so we've got that. And then last but not least, remember this is also, this is all if the 10% condition is met. Okay, so that's a fairly important part. Um, you need to have at least, you know, you can't, your sample can't be any larger than 10% of your population. Okay. Remember, everything's going to be approximately normal if large counts is met. And for large counts, you have to say that basically both the chances of success and failure have at least 10 instances of those things happening. So n times p has to be bigger than or equal to 10. n times not p is bigger than or equal to 10. Usually I will have a student who say, well, what happens if it isn't? At this point in this class, we will typically say we're going to go ahead and proceed with caution just to see what the results are. But that's more of a practice of what's going on. Okay. And then last but not least, if the sampling distribution of P hat, it's a little bit hard to see, my P got a little bit big there. Is approximately normal, then your Z score like we had is again going to be P hat, so that's gonna be minus P. So again, observed, observed mean minus typical mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so again, compare this back to x minus x bar all over standard deviation. Okay, so same setup, we're just substituting in all the different parts. And again, a lot of this you will have on your reference sheet anyway, but that's just so you can kind of tie it back to something else. So we're going to talk about cavities here. So um, in a second, go ahead and pause this, go through the questions, and then come on back and we'll talk about it. And we'll see you in a minute. <coughs> Hey, all right, so here's the problem. According to the American Dental Association, 8% of adults have never had a cavity. I wish I was one of them. Um, a dental graduate student can, can the, contacts a simple random sample of 1,000 adults and calculates a proportion of P hat in the sample who never had a cavity. Couple things to note. Here is your P value, and then here is your N value, okay? So up according to this, since the American Dental Association said 8% have never had a cavity, we're going to assume that that works for all adults. Okay, so that's P, that's for the population. And then this dental student is comparing what they're finding to what they're seeing. So here, your mean of P hat is going to be 8% or 0 0.08. Again, that ties back up to what's over here, as I said. It's the best thing ever. I shouldn't say best thing ever, simplest thing ever. And then calculate and interpret the standard deviation. Check that the 10% condition is met. So for the 10% commission, 1,000 is less than or equal to 10% or one-tenth of all adults. So therefore, the 10% condition is met. For your standard deviation, then, you're going to take the square root of P times 1 minus P divided by your sample size of N. In this case, 1,000, so we get 0 0.009. Now, you do have to kind of state something out, so you're going to be nice, and you're going to say the sample proportion of adults that have never had a cavity typically varies by 0 0.009 from the true proportion of 0 0.08. Now, is the sampling distribution of P hat approximately normal? To check normalcy, you have to do large counts. So by large counts, I'm going to multiply this out. Sure enough, 8% of 1,000 is 80. That's bigger than 110 which leaves the remaining 92% to be 920 of the 1,000, and that's obviously bigger than 10. So we can say it's approximately normal. Once we say it's approximately normal, that means we can start using z-scores. And that's kind of the whole need, big idea from there.
Find the probability that the random sample of 1,000 will give us a result within two percentage points of the true value. Okay. So basically, if this is my true value, I'm going two percentage points this way, and I'm going two percentage points that way. So I'm going to go between a range of 6 and 10%. So there's the graph of that. Before you ask, the answer is yes, you need it. So my mean is 8%, standard deviation, so I'm going to find the difference in between. Two different ways you can do it. Now, the thing is, since we're moving the same direction, and this is something that I think a lot of students don't use enough, when you calculate out your z-value, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to, so I'm going to do this uh, bottom one right here. So 0 0.606 minus 0 0.08. And I go through this and I get negative 2.22. That's below the mean. Since I'm going the same distance above the mean, I know that this Z value is going to be 2.22. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to go through and calculate it out again, but or you can use it as a double check. So there, we've got z is 2.22, z is negative 2.22, that's the area we want to find between. By table A, the distance from everything from the left up to the 10% is um, 0.9868. Everything up into here in the tail that we're taking off is 0 0.0132. So when we subtract those two, we get a number just bigger than 97%. Now you can also go through and do your normal CDF. If you prefer to do that, that's fine. Just remember to label out your points. Normal CDF. Low, high, mean, standard deviation. And you get the same number. All right. So now the question here is, if the sample size were 9,000 rather than 1,000, how would this change the sampling distribution of p hat? Now, the mean isn't going to change. Why? Because the mean doesn't have anything to do with n. The mean is just the mean. However, the standard deviation is going to change. And you can look at this one of two different ways. So the distribution would remain approximately normal with the standard deviation would be decreased by one third of the value. And you can do, so one way you can do it is you can just calculate out the new standard deviation. So I get 0 0.03 if this is 9,000. And so 0 0.03 over 0 0.09 equals one third, okay? The other way that you can think about that is this. Going from here to here, you're multiplying by nine which that means that in your standard deviation here, I've got basically my previous standard deviation, right? Times nine. So if I want to keep this the same, that's going to be your previous standard deviation times the square root of one over nine. So that means it's just going to be your previous number times what's the square root of one ninth, one third. So that would be also an acceptable way to do it, okay? But anyway, however you do it, just be prepared to explain which way you go. And some people just like the simplicity of this, even though it's a little bit more work. This, I think, I think as a college professor of mine used to say, is a little bit more on the elegant side. Regardless, if you can explain what you're doing and it's right, you'll be fine. So there's our Reese's Pieces. If you don't like those, get ready for some Skittles because those are coming up next. So as always, we'll talk to you later. If you have any questions, leave them below. Bye.